Welcome everyone. My name is Tony Klein, Superintendent of University Academy. Welcome to the graduation of the class of 2020. <laughs> Thank you all for being good sports and complying with what we need to do to have this be a safe ceremony. I really want to thank the high school for doing, going above and beyond to make sure we had an in-person ceremony. So thank you, everybody at the upper school. We're lucky to have Mayor Lucas on hand, and he has a tight schedule. So I'm going to be very short before I turn it over to Dr. Yukoma. But before I leave, I want to say congratulations to the class of 2020. And I want to announce the total scholarship amounts that you guys earn, which is $8.7 million between the 50 of you. Great. Congratulations. Dr. Yukoma. I'd like to have my Aunt Boyd come up. She's the uh, salutatorian for the class and have her. Yeah. The rest of you may sit down. Good morning, everyone. Congrats, class of 2020. I would like to introduce the people on our stage. First up is Mr. Tony Klein, our superintendent. And we also have Katie Cow Gearson, chairman of the board. Nicole Jacob Sylvie, vice chairman of the board. David V. Dickey, who's the treasurer. Laura Greenbaum, who's a member. And Dr. Clem Ucoma, who is our upper school, super, uh, upper school principal. And the following board members were unable to join us today, but I will go ahead and read off their names as well. Dr. Barnett C. Hellsberg, Jr., Dr. Shirley Bush Hellsberg, and Bush Hellsberg, as well as Lee Ray Warrior. Thank you. Oh. Now I'd like to uh, have to invite uh, Tessa Blight, who's a, a valedictorian, to come and introduce our keynote speaker. I have to breathe. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Quentin Lucas was born in Kansas City, and with the exception of the brief times he was away in college, he has lived in the city's urban core. As a child, his family moved often, even experiencing homelessness. At times, they stayed with family and friends even residing in motels. But young Quentin managed to overcome these challenges by staying focused on his schoolwork, which made it possible for him to earn academic scholarships and eventually achieve success at the highest levels. After graduating from Barstow, Quentin Lucas went on to attend the prestigious Washington University in St. Louis where he earned an AB political science degree. He followed that by enrolling in graduate school at Cornell University in Ithaca, New York, where he earned his JD, Juris Doctor, degree. Post law school, Mr. Lucas clerked for Judge Dwayne Benton of the US Court of Appeals for the Eighth Circuit. Between teaching contract law and local government law at KU Law School, where he serves as one of the youngest tenure track law professors in the country. Mr. Lucas devotes his time to his, his first career love, which is politics. Prior to becoming mayor, Quentin Lucas served on the city council of Kansas City, Missouri. And as many of you already know, in June 2019, Quentin Lucas was elected to succeed Mayor Sly James as the 55th mayor of Kansas City, Missouri. That makes him one of the youngest persons and only the third black man to hold that position in Kansas City's history. As mayor, Mr. Lucas has focused on four priorities. 
One, making Kansas City's neighborhoods safer. Two, creating more accessible, more affordable housing and public transportation. Three, fostering a healthier com community. And four, improving basic services. Further, he created the city's first special committee on housing policy, which he also chairs. As if to underscore his love of the city, Mayor Lucas still lives in the historic 18th and Vine Jazz District, the very commun community he used to represent on the city council. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome our commencement speaker, the mayor of Kansas City, Missouri, the Honorable Quentin Lucas. Well, um, thank you. Thank you, Tessa, and congratulations on your outstanding accomplishments. Um, you know, what a beautiful day. It is amazing that we are here in the middle of July, and when I first heard about this event, I said, y'all know it's going to be about 100 degrees when we do this. So I am happy that we got a little bit of cloud cover to celebrate these amazing young people. Uh, I want to first of all start by just acknowledging how much you all have gone through over this past year. And in many ways, it symbolizes often what comes to us in life. As you all know, we all come to this position from different paths. Some of us from different family stories, different neighborhoods, and certainly different challenges. And this year, the COVID-19 pandemic, our ongoing challenges with violent crime in our community have continued to put a real challenge in front of you. But the thing that I want all of our seniors to do right now is, is think about all you've been through. Think about how you're sitting here today and think about the differences you are going to make in the months and the years ahead. And when I was looking through the list of your colleges, and by the way, parents, grandparents, family, and friends, y'all did something right. Because every one of these young people is going off to college. Let's give them a round of applause for that. A lot of people spend time saying, what's wrong, right? What's wrong with our community? What's wrong with young people? What's the challenge? How do we get through to you? I'm looking at a group of young people who know what's right, who know that working hard involves studying every day, being pleasant as you can, right? Making sure that you're remembering so many, so many others in your community and in your neighborhoods. And I know that there are many of you who are now eager to move on to that next stage of life. Some of you might be nostalgic about leaving this wonderful community. And you all know that you're graduating during difficult and extraordinary times. And the other thing that I want you to recognize is that, yes, there are going to be a lot of things that come our way. I still remember back in February, and you might too, when the Chiefs won the Super Bowl, right? And I was like, man, how did I get so lucky being mayor right now, right? I'm like, oh, man, you know, I become mayor, the Chiefs win the Super Bowl, everything's going to go great. And then things change a little bit. That's what's going to happen for you in college and in life and as adults. But as long as you always know that you can get through it, as long as you remember a lot of the principles, the foundation that you learned right here at University Academy, right from your parents and grandparents and family and friends who are with us today, then you're going to be all right. I know that in my own life I've had all types of situations where I wondered, can I still handle this? Can I still do this? There were times when I went off to law school and nobody in my family had gone that far. At that point, nobody in my family had graduated college. And I had this kind of struggle in saying, can I do it? And the answer always is that yes, I can. Yes, we can. And that's what you have to believe. And I know you're going to a lot of different places. Some of you are going to school very close to here. Some of you I see going off to Kansas State, Wichita State, going further. And by the way, I spent some time in Wichita. It's cool. You'll get used to it. But I'll say this, what you have to remember is that you can handle it. You are equipped, you are talented, you are courageous, and you are bold. So the other thing that I want to push to all of you is don't forget about us. Don't forget about Kansas City. Now, this always breaks my heart when I ask a group of students uh, if you want to live in Kansas City when you're adults or not. Because some of y'all, for some reason, want to go somewhere else. I don't know why. But nevertheless, by a show of hands, how many of you want to come back to Kansas City or stay in Kansas City after college? 
in my crowd. We're not doing something right, huh? So that's okay. That's okay. That's usually what people say when they're 17 or 18. But the thing that's going to be important is even if you go far away, don't forget about everybody who's back here. Don't forget about all the young people. And I know there's some younger kids in the audience. Don't forget about the young people who need to see your example, who are seeing the success that you have. The young people and the so many people in our community who have all types of thoughts about what it is to be a young black man, a young black woman, a young Latino, a young Latino, right? Make sure that you are that example of what we really are and what this next generation really is. There are a lot of people that try to define our communities, particularly communities of color, by what's lacking or what they think we're not. They don't define it by talented people like you. They don't define it by a group of 50 young people who have an excess of $8 million of scholarships right? They don't define it by a group of young people that are making changes and differences, not just in this community, but going off to lots of communities. And I want you to know that you are the definition of success, of excellence, and of what our future can be. So wherever it is that you go, be that in Kansas City, and more of y'all going to come back than you think. But be it in Kansas City, be it somewhere further away, know that you are that example. And I want you to remember that you are already leaders. Leaders don't have to be elected mayor. Leaders don't have to be the principal or a teacher or anything like that. You're leaders in what you're doing with your example each and every day. There are a lot of kids in Kansas City who don't get to the point that you are making it to today. I know that breaks my heart, that breaks your teachers' hearts, but the way that we start to make that difference, even from somebody who might be your same age, is they say, oh wow, you finished high school? Yeah, yeah, I'm going off to do this. I'm going off to get a job. I'm making this difference in my community. And you can just tell somebody you should too. You can tell somebody, look, I believe in you. And this is where you start to be those mentors for so many others in our society. And the other thing that I want to ask you to do, and I'll be real quick on telling you a story that was early in my life, is even as you're being successful, and right now you should be proud of yourselves and stand tall, because you're going off to do some amazing and some bold and some powerful things. Don't forget about helping somebody else along the way. When I was in law school, I went to law school in New York State. And so, I, I, like you, I thought I was never coming back to Kansas City. I got out of my neighborhood. I was making money. I was on this path to be incredibly successful. Um, and then I remember I had a professor who asked me if I would work on a death penalty case. And I said, no, no, I want to be a business lawyer. I want to be kind of more about making money, all of that. But she said, well, you have to care about somebody else. So I agreed to work on this case, and it was in uh, Georgia, a small town about an hour south of Atlanta. Our defendant was a gentleman who'd been sentenced to death when he was about 18 years old, so about your age. He had a child, but he was selling drugs. He got involved in some things and then was charged with double murder. The other challenge in that case was that he had a lawyer. The defendant was black. His lawyer was white, and the lawyer had used racial slurs to describe him and had not given them a fair representation. I put my heart into that case. I remember working on it, meeting with him, talking to him, but we were unsuccessful. We lost. And when you lose a death penalty case, you really lose, because he was executed. And I remember after that, I kind of was saying, well, why did I do any of this? Why did I go through that experience? But a while later, I got a letter from his 17-year-old daughter. And she said, up to that point, nobody had ever cared about her or her family. Nobody actually stopped to listen to her. And she also mentioned that she had one of the greatest fathers around, which was interesting to me, because I never met my father in life, but I didn't see him as a central cast character as what would be a great father. But what I told that girl, what I told that family, what I told that community, was there are people that are all around the country, you may not know that well, but who care about you. For just a day or a few days, even though we weren't successful in sparing his life, we were successful in letting people know that we cared about them, that we were working for them, and that society wasn't fully against them. That's the difference that you can make in whatever experiences that you take on. It might be that one of you becomes a teacher, and you tell not just the A student that you care, but you tell that student who might be struggling, I'm here for you, I still want you to succeed. You might be somebody who works for a city, and you tell that nice old lady who's having issues with her roof, that we care about you, we'll find a way to get it fixed. Or you might just be that friend 
who somebody says, I can't figure this out. I can't get a job. I can't do that. And you tell them, hey, call this person. Think about this deal. Those are the sorts of changes that I know you know to make. And that's how, whether there's COVID, whether there's any challenge under the sun, you all will be game changers, game changers for Kansas City, for your families, and for our country. So I want you to be so proud of yourselves. I want you to remember us, all of your parents, your family, your friends who worked so hard to get you here. And by the way, let's make sure graduates, let's give them a round of applause real quick. Our families, our friends. But I want to make sure that whatever you do and whatever profession you decide, Know that you are courageous, that you are talented, that you are strong, that you deserve to be there. And never forget that as you go through this path, graduates, make sure you're there to lift somebody up. That's how we change Kansas City. That's how we change our community. And that's how we can change our country long term. Thank you so very much. Congratulations, and God bless you all. I'd now like to invite Ms. Katie uh, Gersham, who's our uh, chairperson of our board, to come and say a word of welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Lucas. Goodbye. Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is going to be very short because I know I'm standing in the way of you getting your diploma. So with that, I'd like to just say on behalf of the Board of Directors of University Academy, I want to say a warm welcome. What does, it, what does a graduation look like when you can't have all of the pomp because of the circumstances? It looks a lot like this, an unconventional way to be together, but no less remarkable. I speak for all of us on the board when I say we are so proud of you. And although you are graduating at a time of great uncertainty, you will forever be linked to the profound opportunity to stand at the threshold of extraordinary change. Class of 2020, this is your time. Congratulations. And now, Tessa, would you come up and tell us what you got? Hello again. Entering high school, I knew I would have to learn a foreign language. I knew I would have to endure those dreadful masteries. What I did not know was that I would end up having to learn how to keep myself sane during isolation. Remember not to accidentally hug loved ones. Remind myself to use hand sanitizer every five seconds, if not more frequently and learn how to push myself to learn independently under a virtual regime. Yet, by far, the biggest challenge that I faced when the school year so abruptly ended on March 12, 2020, was how to handle, no, embrace ambiguity. According to Webster's Dictionary, ambiguity has to do with being doubtful or uncertain especially from obscurity or indistinctness. Like the rest of my cohort, or for that matter, the rest of the world, I had to learn not only what COVID-19 entails, but I also had to learn to live with ambiguity. We did not know it was even a possibility that we would be here walking this commencement stage together in person even as the reality still stares us in the face that nobody knows how long this pandemic will be with us. But I kept reminding myself that none of us knows why bees are able to fly either, or why a single tomato has more genes than the average person, or why people blush or yawn. Yet, somehow, magically, the world remains intact. Persevering through rough and uncharted territory is just one of the many lessons any person has to learn in life. 
our class just happens to have a unique advantage. We learn this lesson sooner. Born into the year of the falling towers and the beginning of the war in Afghanistan, the class of 2020 was built to endure. Not only did our class endure the hardships of the COVID-19 pandemic, most likely we will survive it. We are taking life by the reins and fighting with all our might to leave a mark for generations to come. I am sure it is easy to get caught up in our own circumstances, to feel lost, down, or upset. However, let's also take the time to acknowledge the fact that this virus has given us a chance to slow down and take a deep breath, given us time to stop worrying, as Dr. Yukoma would often tell me. Even though some of us may not have gotten the chance to compete at nationals for decathlon, wear our customized prom dresses and tuxedos, let us strive to enjoy these last moments before we take on the burdens of student loans. One thing is certain, we still made it to the finish line. For that, we have to thank the gracious Never Say Die staff of our upper school and our superintendent, Mr. Klein. We have been afforded this rare opportunity to physically be here to receive our diplomas in front of friends and family. The book of our lives is waiting to be written and starting today, we begin a new chapter of that book. Look around you. It begins now and it will end when we turn our tassels and throw our caps into the air. While the past months have been difficult, they did not ruin our opportunities or dampen the adventures ahead of us. I want each and every one of you to remember the sacrifices, small and large, that brought you to this point. All the long sleepless nights spent worrying about this and that, all the endless studying, all those stressful masteries that kept coming, all the distractions we faced during the time of online classes. Remember too, the occasional spats you had with this or that teacher over grades you just knew should have been higher. But look how far you have come. Don't you ever forget that anything worth having is worth the working hard. The way I see it, it was your sweat and your tears, plus the love of friends and family. Okay, the oc occasional nudges and the not few kicks in the you know what from teachers may also have helped just a little bit that got you to this point, to this place. Speaking for myself, I could not have got, gotten here without the constant support of friends and family. My close friends were the ones who cheered me up and on. They lifted my spirits when I felt like there wasn't any hope left. But it was my mother, especially, who continued to push me to be and become the best version of myself. From the small celebration she organized for us over a weighted test I had aced, to the pep talks I needed when I did not manage my time well, and was, as a consequence, stressed out and feeling out of control. She is the reason I made it my mission to work hard throughout high school so I might have a shot at being the valedictorian of my class. Thank you, Mom. We made it. I want to give a special shout out to Kiera for always filling the room with your laughter to Janae for bringing your fun, spunky attitude to every occasion. To Mayan for stepping up to the plate as the leader of UA's chapter of the National Honor Society and for shining in Louder Than a Bomb, our award-winning poetry club, which Mr. Blakemore serves so ably as advisor. To Elijah, our class president, whose over-the-top yet beloved outbursts and cheers I am sure you will hear throughout the ceremony, and to Jaden, 
for being the glue that held our class together with your natural charm and spirit. I couldn't call every name, but each one of you knows how you, your contributions, both to our class and to your own success, made the class of 2020 unique. Thank you to the upper school staff, not only for your support and guidance through our, our high school experiences, but also for putting this beautiful graduation together when most other schools simply phoned it in. Thank you, Dr. Yukoma, Ms. Jackson, Ms. Horner, Ms. Kenyon, Mr. Burdett, and all those whom time does not allow me to personally thank. You all rock. And finally, thank you to all of the friends and family who joined us here today to celebrate this milestone in our lives. I would also like to extend our thanks to all of those who could not physically be here today. We know you are here in spirit and that some of you are listening and viewing the ceremony via live stream. Winston Churchill once said, the pessimist sees difficulty in every opportunity, but the optimist sees opportunity in every difficulty. Class of 2020, I challenge us to be optimists not only through these, the rest of these uncertain times, but also throughout your own lives. I challenge each one of you to write, chapter by chapter, an optimistic story for your life. I can't wait to read the stories of our lives four, 10, 20, or 30 years from today. I am so glad that nothing, not even a raging global pandemic caused by a novel coronavirus could rob us of the liberating feeling of this well-earned, well-deserved achievement. After all, aren't we the class of 2020? <laughs> Weren't we the class that bore witness to the falling, falling of the Twin Towers on September 11th, 2001? Were we not the same class that saw the beginning of the Afghanistan War one month after that on October 7th, 2001, a war that still rages on? Guess what? COVID-19 isn't going to stop us either. We were born to master ambiguity and we're ready for what may come. Class of 2020, congratulations. Against all odds, we made it. Members of the board, this is a point where I uh, ask you to uh, accept my declaration that this class, each and every member of them, uh, has met the requirements which you set forward as being what students need to do to graduate from University Academy. Okay, one and all, we practiced this just a couple days ago. You know how it works. Section by section, we're going to hand out the diplomas. Tajay Baston. <laughs> Tiffany Lily Benitez. <laughs> Tessa Corinne Chinyao Blythe. Mayan Andrene Camille Boyd. Cameron Bowie.
Deja Nay Butler. DeAnthony Allen Casey. Lynette. Anaya Lynette Clark. Paul G. Coleman. Malia Dace. Michael Eugene Daniel. Naja Simone Day. Alyssa Janice Dixon. Javon Drummer. Taisha Farley. Paulina Michelle Garcia. Cameron Monet Grimes. Jamisha Nicole Hawkins. Ashaya Ranis Heron. London Demi Grace Howard. Elijah Miguel Hudson Moore. Ariel Michelle Johnson. Jaden Jarrell Johnson. Cameron Lee Johnson. Aaliyah Claudine Mukaraguama Quizera. Germany Lee. Jordan Legrere. Tamia Joy Levingston. Grace Christian Marshall. Javen James McKay.
Jasmine Olivia McDonald. Mia Ray. Kiera Andrell Renty. Lillian Scanlon. Wayne Demetrius Sellers. Farron Marie Smith. Jalen Miles Smith. Sebastian Giancarlo Smith. <laughs> Dale Sean Lamar Tatum. Arthur Jamar Timley Jr. <laughs> Damian Deshaun Tripp. Rayana Michelle Tucker. <laughs> Makiba Vaughn. Janae Marie Weaver. Leonia Kate White. Tayani Chevelle Williams. Amanda Rachel Wolf. Yasmin Yamani Workoff. Autumn Ray Wyatt. Demarion Young.
Elijah Hudson Moore, would you join me on stage? Would the class of 2020 please stand? <laughs> please join me. Y'all ready? Please join me in turning your tassel from the right to the left. Congratulations to us all. Are you going to dismiss the thing? Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Thomas? 